Even before microorganisms were seen, some investigations suspected their existence and responsibility for disease. But no one had observed or described the microorganisms in the old times. Various scientists performed experiments and believed in the spontaneous generation of microorganisms. In this video, we are going to talk about the theories on spontaneous generation. person to observe and describe microorganisms accurately was the amateur microscopist Anthony van Leeuwenhoek of Holland. Leeuwenhoek spent much of his spare time constructing simple microscopes composed of double convex glass lenses held between two silver plates, as shown in this picture. His microscopes could magnify around 50 to 300 times. This figure shows the drawing of one of the microscopes showing the lens denoted by A, B representing the mounting pin and D representing the focusing screen. These are the Leeuwenhoek's drawing of bacteria from the human mouth. Beginning in 1673, Leeuwenhoek sent detailed letters describing his discoveries to the Royal Society of London. It is clear from his descriptions that he saw both bacteria and protozoa. From the earliest times, people had believed in spontaneous generation. Even the great Aristotle thought some of the simpler invertebrates could arise by spontaneous generation. The theory of spontaneous generation states living organisms could develop from non-living things. This theory was challenged by Italian physician Francesco Reddy, who carried out a series of experiments on decaying meat and its ability to produce maggots spontaneously. Reddy placed meat in three containers. One was uncovered, a second was sealed and the third was covered with a fine gauze that would exclude flies. Flies laid their eggs on the uncovered meat and maggots developed. The other two pieces of meat did not produce maggots spontaneously. However, flies were attracted to the gauze covered container and laid their eggs on the gauze. These eggs produced maggots. Thus, the generation of maggots by decaying meat resulted from the presence of fly eggs and meat did not spontaneously generate maggots as previously believed. Leeuwenhoek's discovery of microorganisms renewed the theory. Some proposed that microorganisms arose by spontaneous generation even though larger organisms did not. They pointed out that boiled extracts of hay or meat would give rise to microorganisms after setting for a while. John Nidam, the English priest, reported his results on spontaneous generation. He did experiment with mutton broth using flasks. Nidam boiled mutton broth and tightly stoppered the flasks. Eventually, many of the flasks became cloudy and contained microorganisms. His conclusion was that organic matter contained a vital force that could confer the properties of life on non-living matter. A few years later, the Italian priest and naturalist Lazzaro Spallanzani improved on Nidham's experience. He first sealed glass flasks that contained water and seed. The upper picture depicts the Nidham's experiment and the lower depicts the Lazaro's experiment. He experimented that if the sealed flasks were placed in boiling water for three-fourths of an hour, no growth took place as long as the flasks remained sealed. Therefore, he proposed that air carried germs to the culture medium. 
but also commented that external air might be required for growth of animals already in the medium. The supporters of spontaneous generation maintained on the theory by saying that heating the air in sealed flasks destroyed its ability to support life. Further experiments by Schwann and Felix Pouchet claimed that microbial growth could occur without air contamination. This claim provoked Louis Pasteur to settle the matter once and for all. Pasteur first filtered air through cotton and found that objects resembling plant spores had been trapped. If a piece of the cotton was placed in sterile medium after air had been filtered through it, microbial growth appeared. Next, Louis Pasteur designed an experiment to test whether sterile nutrient broth could spontaneously generate microbial life. To do so, he set up two experiments. In both, Pasteur added nutrient broth to flasks. He bent the neck of the flask into S shape. And then, boiled the broth to kill any existing microbes. After the broth had been sterilized, Pasteur broke off the swan's neck from the flask in the second experiment, exposing the nutrient broth within them to air from above. The flasks in first experiment were left as it is. Over time, dust particles from the air fell into the broken flasks of the second experiment. In the first experiment, dust particles remained near the tip of the swan neck but could not travel into the flask keeping the nutrient broth sterile. The broth in the broken flask quickly became cloudy indicating the occurrence of microbial life. However, the broth in the unbroken flasks remained clear without the contamination. Thus, the Louis Pasteur experiment refuted the notion of spontaneous generation. He concluded that no growth occurred because dust and germs had been trapped on the walls of the curved necks of the flask. If the necks were broken, growth commenced immediately. Pasteur did not only resolve the controversy but also had shown how to keep the solution sterile. If you like this video, please subscribe and leave a comment for queries and suggestions. Thank you.